Right hand to the body. The good news for Matagua is he's consistent with coming forward. Trying to be the boss in that regard. The bad news, he's consistent in always coming forward. One dimensional and predictable as he does that. Opportunity still for Brown to counter Matagua as he comes in that front door. Three shots to the body, right hand upstairs, left hand to the body, right hand to the body, and a right hand upstairs again. Right hand all night long as Brown lays over on his right side. The wrong side to lay when a man's throwing right hands at you. You need to finish on the left side where you are outside the right hand. Stiff jab. Just watch if you're at home. If you put your head on the right side and there's distance, the right hand will find you. If you get over on the left side, you are outside the right hand. It will not find you. The right hands are finding ground. And if you didn't want to get hit by a train, you shouldn't run on the tracks. He's been in the line of that train, of that locomotive right hand now for three rounds. And if you care about whether or not my prediction of a fourth round knockout from Otago will be right, stay tuned. I think you got a good shot. Melvin Wesley, the trainer for Alvin Brown. You heard that right there. I'm stopping this fight if you don't go out there and work. He says, be first, be first. He has not liked what he has seen early on against Rogers Matagua. Teddy, the right hand, time and time again. Yes, sir. And again, where Brown puts himself time and time again, laying over on that right side, and you could see it. Perfect position for the right hand to the body and then to the head. And as we pointed out early, when Brown does come up and put those earmuffs on to protect against that onslaught to the head, the elbows come out and the body is exposed. A body that Matagua has gone to. Give Matagua credit for not just head hunting. Alvin Brown, 36 years old from Kansas City, 26 up, career up, wins. He's in the red. Rogers Matagua, USBA featherweight champ in the white with black. Fourth round, Teddy Atlas says it'll end in this round. That was his pre-fight prediction. The right hand comes in from Alvin Brown. We also said the fight plan, if there's a punch that Brown can find, it would be the right hand. You did. Because Matagua will give you that opportunity just as he takes advantage of that opportunity. And that has to be pleasing for Melvin Wesley. He wanted to see him go out there and show some offense. He comes with the right hand again. He again, said, be first, work. He said it the last round. The good news for Matagua, he's consistent bringing that pressure straight ahead. The bad news, he's consistent bringing that pressure straight ahead. He can be figured out as he comes forward the same way all the time. There is hope for Brown to counter right there. He did it. As Matagua is always coming in the same door. Don't punch, don't punch. As difficult as it is for Brown right now, again, showing stoutness of heart. And there's always opportunities, as strong as Matagua can be. There's opportunities because Matagua, not exactly Claude Reigns. He is not invisible in there. You can lash out, and at any moment, you can find him. Left hand off balance, Brown goes backwards. There's a good right hand from Matagua.
go round. Hey, Teddy, what do you get for that? You nailed it. Where do I cash in my ticket? <laughs> You had one second left to make your prediction come in, and it did. I think Roger Matagua is one of my favorite fighters now. Pressure all night long, nothing fancy, nothing complicated, and right hands with that pressure. And to the credit of Matagua, right hands not only to the head, but to the body, sapping right hands to that body of Brown and to the head of Brown. And to the credit of Brown, just to hang around, taking that punishment from the first round, to hang around for four rounds, shows character and shows heart. Here's how he finished it off. Right hand came down. And again, that right hand there all night because of that. A little separation and Brown leaving his head, as we said early on, on the right hand side. Here's another look. Separation, a jab, and a space. And a space that was filled all night long by the right hand of Rogers Matagua. Rogers Matagua, the big right hand. He started throwing it, he started landing it, and he won with it. For the official particulars, we send it to our ring announcer, Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, three minutes and six seconds at the end of the fourth round, and a winner by a knockout, and still the USBA featherweight champion, Rogers, the Tiger, Matagua. Matagua. Rogers Matagua, 21 wins now in his career, 16 knockouts. Teddy, there has been talk about him facing another very exciting offensive-minded fighter, the undefeated Jason Litzow. In fact, Carl Moretti from Main Events, Litzow's promoter, is ringside tonight. What do you think of that possible matchup? It may not last long, but I would buy a ticket to watch it as it went on. Perhaps one of the most entertaining featherweight fights that could be made out there, Matagua Litzau. The African native who's become Philly tough. And boy, oh boy, did he deliver. The fourth round knockout, Rogers Matagua over Alvin Brown. More when we come back. This Friday, the number one junior middleweight, Sugar Shane, sweetens up our studio. In the ring, we will showcase Ann Wolf, one of the finest female fighters in the world, along with rising undefeated prospect Anthony Peterson. And next week, it's the season finale of Wednesday Night Fights. Verno Phillips puts his top ten status on the line against the heavy-handed Teddy Reed. Crowd here in Philly at the new Alhambra. They are thrilled because in the main event, their hometown fighter, Rogers Matagua, came up big against Alvin Brown. First knockdown of the fight. Matagua on the attack. Left hand came in, and Brown went down. Brown doesn't have the best chin in the world, but Matagua's offense combined that to be just too much. Two right hands sent him going across the wing. And